the biggest consideration is how to make it to where if you fail, you redirect the mindset around the failure because it's not a failure. Fitness is a journey. How am, why am I wrong? Or it's just, it's just different when it comes to people with ADHD and what is another method to use if the specific isn't or the smart goals aren't the best way to go. Hey everyone, welcome back to the show. I'm excited today. This guest is going to be amazing, a topic we've never covered before, and we kind of disagree. So there might be some throwing of the fist through the video today because we we vehemently disagree on many, many different subjects. But today, my special guest is Peter, who has his bachelor's in psychology, currently working towards his master's in nutrition, exercise, physiology, is a certified personal trainer, a life coach, and has been in the health and fitness industry for over seven years. He has developed a system that works for his brain and started applying that to his clients and realized it worked for impactful behavior change. He found out he had ADHD and focuses on helping ADHDers develop fitness habits. Peter, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. And uh, I'm excited to explore a little bit more uh, of all the topics with you. Absolutely. So, I mean, look, let's let's first uh, define our terms a little bit. I you know everyone everyone throws around the term ADHD quite a bit, in my opinion. So, how about you? Just what's your what's the definition of ADHD that we're using today? So, it's attention deficit hyperactive disorder, but there are three types that are recognized by the DSM. Now, there's a bunch of other stuff that's being added in there, but we're just going to go by this for today to where it is hyperactive ADHD, um, there is inattentive, and then there's combined type. Essentially, most people are gonna be combined type. It is very rare that somebody is hyperactive specific. All it is is the brain is more focused on reward, which leads to executive function disorder, uh, dis executive function problems, to where it's hard getting started or it's very easy to just get stopped in your tracks, which could be a potential issue for fitness. And that's why we disagree on the SMART goals a little bit. And um, <clears throat> in addition, there's an emotional dysregulation involved with it. So let's just say everything is magnified uh, when it comes to emotions with ADHD to where it feels like if you get off track, it is all or nothing most of the time. So you'll notice that most people uh, in a lot of the studies are obese when they have ADHD. They're more likely to be obese or have an eating disorder because there is a lack of executive function and impulse control, which makes it very hard to go around improving your health and fitness. And that's why I go more at that general approach and then narrow it down kind of like a funnel. And I usually use that with most of my clients, not even just the ADHD ones, because it helps when you're anxious around fitness too. Wow. Okay. I think it's a great definition. I mean, I think that's, uh, that will resonate with a lot of people. I think you explained it very well too, because I think it's easy to understand the way that you just said it. So I oversimplified it, but I appreciate it. So. No, it's good. It's, it, it, look, sometimes you got to oversimplify to make sure people get the point. Uh, I think that's important. And so I guess I'll start with the kind of my first thought from what you just said. I guess, you know, why is working with ADHD clients, you know, like what's the main consideration when you are working with ADHD clients for their fitness? So there's, uh, I'll break it down because <laughs> one thing you need to know about me right now is I've got like, seven different tabs open in my brain and I'm trying to pick the one to focus on. Only, and that's only seven that goes on. Only right? seven? When, yeah, o only seven. It's it's okay. it's rattling up to 27 now. But you know, um so that's one of the things, funneling the thoughts down on what to focus on. Right. So oh I saw this diet works. Oh I saw that this specific movement is helpful for this. Well <laughs> Kind of like um, creating guidelines to funnel the information down is going to be the most helpful when it comes to to when you're going into the fitness uh, goals and habits and you're getting started with it when you have ADHD. So the biggest consideration is how to make it to where if you fail, you redirect the mindset around the failure because it's not a failure. Fitness is a journey. It's supposed to be long term. 
<laughs> so it's really trying to get into that mindset of, okay, I fell off the bandwagon. All I got to do is put the wheel back on and get it rolling again. But that's very hard because as soon as you hit a bump, all the wheels fall off uh, a lot of the time when you have ADHD. Or one little thing you uh, might put you down a rabbit hole to where now you just created six different scenarios on why that wouldn't work when you didn't even try it out. And so that's like some of the the things that ends up happening because a lot of it's just there's these thoughts that you have to siphon down and things like that. So when you're doing this, you kind of have to go with a broad concept and then be like, okay, what direction am I going to go in this broad concept and then keep narrowing it down from there and then play around with different things because there's going to be this spiral like motion that happens because one thing may not work and then you might jump to the other thing and then you might circle back to that thing. And that's what ends up happening. So really creating some type of resilience after you feel the things out is going to be helpful. What, I'm not sure if you know this, uh, but like, what is like, is there, if you know it, is there like a correlation to like OCD and ADHD as well? Because some of the things you're saying sound very just familiar in my life, just personally. I'm like, I do a lot of that stuff. I don't think I have ADHD, um, but I'm just curious on like, is uh, I'm assuming there's different levels and, and things of that nature. I guess do uh, how often does it go undiagnosed? Is it something that more people than we think have? I guess any of those does any of those ring a bell? Yeah. So there there's a few things that come to mind as you're saying that. First off, I'll go on the OCD thing. There can be a co-diagnosis of ADHD and OCD. Um, OCD is a little different because it's kind of just like, oh, I got to do this, this, and this in order repetitively. Otherwise, something bad's going to happen in simple terms. Mm -hmm. um, and then ADHD is kind of like, oh, a bunch of bingo balls going on in your head. Like it's all rattling, right? So there are a lot of people that are undiagnosed with ADHD, but we're getting better at recognizing it. And it's because if you have a mild form of it, like I do, it goes undiagnosed for a while because it's not affecting your daily life that much for it to be of a concern. Because you you live with it long enough, you're able to, to find out what's working and what's not for you if you're able to introspect and do these things. There's certain parts in your life where you're just like, holy shit, was that that bad? Like, did did that do that? Like, for a while, I'm just like, oh, I, I mean, that's normal. Like, because all my family does it. But it's genetic. So I guess my family is not normal. You know what I mean? Because it, it just kind of trained. But, you know, you end up going with what works. I notice a lot of personal trainers are more neurodivergent just because you you go with that personality, right? And you're you get that new stimulus each client you're with and stuff like that. But on the other hand, I don't know if you've had a client leave and then you feel rejected and overall like, oh, man, I feel defeated when that happens. Um, and that's how the fitness habits can go too. When you notice something's not working, you really thought it was, and it's just like, shit, that didn't go well. And then you just go in this sulking kind of thing. It's like, oh man, but long story short, it goes undiagnosed. I don't know the actual statistic on how many people actually have it that may have not been diagnosed, but it, um, a lot of people might end up having it. That isn't now on the other side, not everybody has it. <laughs> Um, we are in a society in which we do crave rewards now and everything is just in our face for immediate gratification. It's just magnified for somebody who has ADHD. That makes sense. Okay. So I might not have, I might have it and have no idea or I might not have it, but there's just the stimulations. Around. Okay. I mean, that makes a lot of sense mm -hmm. to me. Uh, I want to go to what you said right at the beginning because the audience probably is like, what are you talking about? So as the audience might know, if you've ever listened to me before, I'm a big fan of SMART goals. I think that for the demographic that I teach specifically and, and a demographic I coach, SMART goals are invaluable, right? It's get specific, measurable, attainable, or aligned, depending on who you're talking about, realistic uh, and timely, things like that, or I guess relevant as well, depending on which acronym you use. All of it's very important to itemize, almost itemize exactly what you want to do to see the results that you want to see and then take specific action to do that. Whereas someone with ADHD, that's probably not the best way to do it, as you were starting to explain before. So, you know, you, you talk about this general to specific uh, mindset, you're going large to go to small. You kind of made that motion before. So I guess, how am, why am I wrong 
or it's just, it's just different when it comes to people with ADHD and what is another method to use if the specific isn't, or the SMART goals aren't the best way to go? So I do not think you're wrong. I think that is the end of the funnel. And okay, so I'm starting down here though, but I want to, you want to be up here. Okay. Yes. And, and the reason why is because you have to figure out what works best for you first before you can even narrow down. Otherwise, it's going to set you off the, the wrong track. If you're somebody who gets discouraged pretty easily or just has a hard time building the momentum up. Because a lot of the times people with ADHD, it's getting started that's the hardest part and then finding the rhythm to keep it going. And so once you're able to pattern recognize, because people with ADHD do very well with pattern recognition, if they're able to ask themselves the introspective questions on what do I see that's working for me, um, getting away from the feelings of it, because it, it's very easy to get immersed in the feelings when you're a highly emotional person due to the potential dysregulation of emotions when you have ADHD. So really, the focus is on organizing yourself around it. So with that being said, the large thing is, okay, let's go off of the six pillars of vitality that I kind of go by, but you can go off of different health models. It's not like the only thing out there. It's just something I did to categorize things on how I coach. So the six pillars are going to be nutrition, movement, sleep, mindfulness, self-care, and connection. That's kind of how I go about it, but you can find that in... You know, there's a 12 dimension model. There's, you know, it, it, it is what it is. General concept. Okay, well, that's a lot of things around fitness and wellness. Which one do you choose? Which one are you going to choose? Right? And that's what gets overwhelming with people with ADHD is there's so many options that a paralysis occurs on what to do. So the first thing is let's funnel it down to keep it simple. And what I would say is start off with movement or nutrition to get started. Because most people with ADHD have something going on with sleep that just won't be fixed right away <laughs> because there's a lot of comorbidities of sleep disorders. Okay. The mindfulness, all these pillars kind of go into each other and you can have it stack. But if you just focus on the nutrition or the movement to start off with, it at least gets you set up for success. Sometimes with ADHD, what ends up happening is you try to do every single pillar at once. And that's why you pick the broad topic and then narrow it down based off of the goal you want to hit. So it's like, okay, well, what's the reason why you're going to do this now? So you picked your main one. Let's use uh, movement, for example. All right. What do you want to get out of it? Well, I want to feel better. Oh, okay. So you want to feel better. Well, how can you feel better from movement? And you tie it into the why to create that dopamine boost to really get that hit. Then you're just like, oh, okay, so what what am I going to do in order to get into the more movement? Well, you don't want to go all at once to where I'm going to do three, three times a week. I'm going to run for 50 minutes, and I'm going to do that for three months. Well, first, if you end up doing that and then you just hate it, you're going to be like, well, I didn't achieve my goal. I'm going to get out of it now, and I'm not going to do anything. And so that's what ends up happening. So instead, it's just like, I'm going to move three times a week, and then you narrow it down from there. It's just like, let's just do movement. Let's pick a base movement that we're going to do. I like to rock climb. So let's just say I'm going to rock climb for an hour. Okay, well, what about the times in which rock climbing is not going to work? I don't want to just not work out or get movement in. So, well, I'm going to go in and I'm going to just go for a 20-minute walk for the times that I'm on a time crunch. You know, we're, that's all I have. Okay, well, outside isn't available. What am I going to do then? Well, I'm going to go in, on the machine in the gym or I'm just going to march in place or whatever. So you have your main and then you have your two backups for that specific goal you're trying to go for. And then <clears throat> you can kind of have a subjective scale to have a measurement tool just to kind of give you that. But at first, it's just like, how many days a week was I able to do that first? and go with that or do i actually enjoy this in the first six weeks are going to be brutal anyway but you'll know in the first two to three weeks if you dreadfully hate it because it takes six weeks for that habit to go past the part of the brain that's hard for adhd years to get ingrained because you could still get that as an adhd -er. 
the actual structure, I forgot the name. So, <laughs> um, but that, that's what ends up happening. So, okay, now you kind of narrowed it down, but you didn't stuff yourself in a box. And that's the thing. You're making the box for yourself. And then just like, oh, well, that movement doesn't work. I don't want to do that. I want to do resistance training. Well, you have your main workout and you have two backup workouts or a walk in there, you know, and you, you kind of circle through what works for you because you're going to end up getting bored of it and changing it. That's how ADHD works. You lose interest in something. So it's consistently making it broad on just focusing on movement rather than the specific task, if that makes sense. And then from there, you can do many smart goals for that specific thing during the season. I mean, what, what you're talking about to me is it, it almost essentially exactly what I teach as well. I just, I think we just call it different things because I think for the most part, smart goals is almost exactly what you just said. I just think you, you have to look at it from a, a nuanced perspective when it comes to people who think a little bit differently. So you can't necessarily go super. It's almost the timing of how quick you go and how deep you get. I think it's more about you know, when I do a normal smart goal, we're doing that exact process. It just might go a little faster than what you had depicted. And versus someone with ADHD, it might just go a little slower with a few extra kind of yeah. roads along the way to get to the bottom. But inherently, it's the same process. It's just there might be some, you know, you're probably taking the scenic route if you have yeah. ADHD. And if you don't, you're probably taking a little bit more of a direct route because you might not need to go the scenic route. I think that's how I was kind of interpreting what you were saying, because a lot of what you're saying is, uh, you know, don't put yourself in a box. I agree with that 100%. Don't start all at once, 100%. You know, don't start off at three days a week, at one hour doing this, this, and this. It's like, no, just start off by, do you want to walk for 20 minutes? Go walk for 20 minutes. And then you build and you build and you figure out what you can do and have options in case you hate what you're doing or you get bored or switch. I I, I mean, I think I agree with this. Uh, I think it's a really good method. I think it makes a lot of sense. I thought we were going to disagree completely uh, when we were first kind of going over it. So uh, I'm glad that there's a lot of synergy in kind of what we teach. I think there's just a different roadmap to how you get to the finish line. But I think and the, that's the inherently... final part, yeah. right? So that's that's why I said the SMART goal is at the end, at the end of the day. It's towards the, it's that's the narrow part of the funnel. Because if you just say, well, create something to where you're going to be specific on it. Well, there was so many other things that need to be going on there that you have to break it up. Because what ends up happening when you have ADHD, you end up, seeing this big picture thing and then you end up walking away from it because you weren't able to break it down into smaller parts that's the hard part with adhd it's very hard to break things down into smaller parts so you don't get overwhelmed with it right and sense. so that's where you develop the funnel and then the smart goal specific at the end um so <laughs> that makes sense no i think it's, i think it's a great method especially understanding how how people with ADHD think it's a great way to kind of get them back on track or at least hold them on the track you want to be, they want to be on versus I hate this moving on. See you later. And then you're able to get, get them and guide them in the right direction. Yeah. It's like expecting the zigzags to occur. Yeah, like you're just like, this is going to happen. Let's work with your brain rather than against it. You don't have to like stick to it, but do build some type of resilience in there. It's not going to be three months maybe, but let's just try to stick with it for a month to see what kind of result we can get for it. Because you could still get some results from four weeks, five weeks, depending 100%. on the month, right? hundred um, percent. And uh, I forgot what I was going to say. That happens. So, Perfect. Yeah. Happens all the time. You mentioned the six pillars. Uh, you know, every coaching has their pillars involved with the health coaching has their eight dimensions of wellness. How did you know? I'm, how did you come up with these six for your client? Like why these six versus eight or versus 12 or versus four? Well, how'd you choose these six specifically? Okay. I remember what I was going to say before. And then okay, we, can go, we can go back. Okay. We can go back. Cool. Go back. So, so um, it, it also works with anxiety and people that just don't feel that great on exercise and that need kind of that extra boost when you're doing that funnel portion, because it's very easy to get anxious about exercise. Okay. Now I can go on the pillars. Fair so, enough. There you go. Sometimes you just have to drop it while it's hot, you know? So, <laughs> uh, so I like to take a mindful-based approach with things that includes the whole person. And so a pillar is something that holds something up and it's integral to it. It's not like it's sectioned like this is this, this is that. It's just like they all kind of go together, but you can kind of classify it as these big things. 
Well, the most, the biggest things you see in fitness when you're personal training is like, yeah, we got to get your movement. Yeah, we got to get the nutrition down. Well, there's so many other things going on. What about how stress affects everything else, right? How about, well, a lot of people end up having lower executive function and impulse control when they're not getting enough sleep. And, and so, okay, that's a factor. If you end up sleeping better, you feel better too. If you end up moving more, you feel better. And I'm a person that, and I learned that this was because of the ADHD, that my energy levels were not consistent. Like I'd have, I'd be up here and then I'd just crash. Or like I'd have five really good days and then my body is just so tired, my brain specifically, that I just crash and I can't do it. It's like I have to take a potato day in which I just sit on the potato couch day. and I bake. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, so <laughs> that's <laughs> that sounds like that. Honestly, that not not to downplay, but that sounds like an introvert who is like out for a few hours, like at a party or something. And it's like, okay, like my my clock has hit three hours. I can no longer socialize. I'm going home to go sit on my couch and watch TV because I don't want to socialize anymore. Like, there's just something that clicks, and it's like I'm leaving. So, uh, yeah. I need I need a potato. Dad. It's very interesting that that also happens in that in that in that circumstance. And going back to like the battery, think of it this way. Um, you know, a computer that takes a lot of energy and it has the nice big old, what's it called? Hard drive? Yeah. Hard drive that helps support it and runs it because it matches the output that's happening. Well, think of the energy being just driven from a big computer with a hard drive that is half the size. And that's what happens with ADHD. So you have to accept that there are going to be potato days on your fitness journey and there's ways to recharge your battery. And that's the six pillars because, okay, well, maybe I'm only able to just get up today and mm -hmm. maybe one task like making breakfast, which sometimes people with ADHD just skip meals because they don't have the mental energy to make it. That's the executive dysfunction going on. And that's where like these cognitive assessments go in. You can go to a facility, it takes freaking forever. And you can get those big assessments and they can measure your executive function, your attention and all these other things to see the severity of it. Because some people, they can just gut it out to where it's just like, all right, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's push. Let's push. Mm -hmm. Other people, it's just like, I feel like I am glued down in the seat and I cannot get up and do anything. And in that instance, what do you have with you? You have the ability to be mindful and that's another pillar, right? So if you're going to focus on anything, it just gives you another option to do something when your battery is low with those six pillars, where it's just like, well, let me just focus on my breath. Let me do a round of breath work. That doesn't really take anything at all. And maybe it helps recharge your battery just enough to be able to get up and take care of yourself a little bit more. What would you say is either a solution perhaps to, you know, people without ADHD, with ADHD, it sounds like there's always going to be situations where you, you just can't get up. You can't get out of bed that day. You can't go work out. Whatever is holding you back is holding you back. And that's very common among the entire population of people who are trying to lose weight, get in shape, eat healthier, whatever. There's going to be days where it's like, I just, I just can't do it for various reasons. How do you turn the one day, which is acceptable, right? To take a break, take a rest day, recharge. How do you keep it at one day versus it turns into the next day and then the next day? And then a week and then a month and then six months and then a year. And I, cause that's what happens to most people. They, they get on this track, they set up a goal. It's harder than they thought it sucks and they give up. And next thing you know, it's, Oh, well the one day off was great. All oh, that cake looked really good. All this happened. And then next thing you know, it's, Oh my gosh, I haven't been to the gym in a year. And so how do you, how do you counteract that? So part of it is planning for it, plan for that day. It's going to happen at the end. Like it, it's there. It happens. It's natural. Reduce the friction around what you're working on. So if you're somebody who does not meal prep and you have the resources to have a meal prep service for you, so you have meals in there and all you have to do is grab it and eat, that's something, right? I meal prep. I take one day or two days of the week and I meal prep my meals. Yeah. Not everybody with ADHD can do that. Not everybody likes to do that in general. 
right? So what are more affordable ways if you can't afford a meal prep service either? Well, you reduce the friction in whatever way you can, right? You put it in immediate sight. You put the things that are better for you out and available. You don't get the shit from the store that does not feel good in your body or that maybe you need to reduce your calorie intake so you get the swaps instead, right? So you get the things that don't require a lot of prep work in that case, especially if it's nutrition, if we're talking and going with the nutrition example. So where it's just like, oh, well, I can focus on the nutrition pillar. That's something other than movement that will help me benefit. Weight loss in general is mainly nutrition, and then you add the movement to keep it off, right? So if you're focused on the nutrition, grab the pre-made things from the store, the pre-cooked chicken in the bag, the grilled chicken, or it's frozen or whatever, right? Oh, now all I have to do is microwave that? Amazing, you know? Um, get the instant oats, <laughs> Okay, I just have to add milk and put it in the, the microwave. Great. You know, um, have deli meat. Like, it's not the worst thing in the world. Yes, it can have some negative things. But if you're not having, if you're already eating bags of chips and a shit ton of foods, right? It's not the worst thing compared. It's a cost benefit ratio, right? Obviously, it's a cost like, benefit yeah. ratio, right? I mean, I don't like deli meat or anything like that personally. But if you're already not getting the minimum of, okay, I'm not getting enough whole foods to begin with, slightly processed meat or processed meat, big whoop, right? It's just like, let's get this down and build from it first and go from there. And then you could be like, oh, I can grab the frozen meats now and I'll just might put that on a baking sheet. But it's just getting it in the door first because it's quick, simple, and easy. And that's the thing, reducing the friction. Make sure your exercise clothes are in your bag and just go straight after work or during work to it, right? So you already have the things made for us. It. Just like, oh, well, I'm not even going to take the risk of going home because then immediately as I sit down, I'm stopped. Personally, that's my issue too. I do not stop home. I end up getting home at 9 p.m. because I end work at like 6.30 or 7 p.m. And then I go straight to the rock climbing gym because my clothes are with me and I already had my food because that was with me too, so I can get my movement in, right? So it's like, okay, see what's the stopping points, the things that end up stopping you, see where your biggest friction points are and do your best to reduce those. Yeah, I mean, and you hit a good point too. It's like, look, if you know something's coming, it's not necessarily about being perfect, it's about triage. And when you're when you're in this battle, it's okay. Use the deli meat as the example. No, is deli meat good for you? No, there's a, it depends on what kind you get. There's pr plenty of bad ingredients, but is it better than the entire bag of chips? Is it better than, you know, X, Y, and Z? And does it help you move the needle in the right direction? Knowing that it's not a long-term solution, knowing that we're just getting past difficult points or just triaging a specific issue that's happening right now. And if that's the case, then yeah, like that's something you should hundred percent do. Or at the same breath, it's yeah. Like if you know that when you get home, you're done don't go home first. Like I know, and it's tough. And I know getting home at 9 PM sounds miserable to most people because you want to sit down, you want to watch TV, you want to go to bed, like whatever those things. But if the goal doesn't align or the action doesn't align with what you're trying to do, then you have to adjust to do it that way. So I do love that. It's basically whatever you think is going to stop you, avoid the thing that's going to stop you. And if it's going home, which for me is 100% the case, then it's like, don't go home first, go work out first or go do whatever you have to do right. to, to, to achieve the goal that you set out to achieve. So I do love that. Then it's a very powerful message because people don't realize it's like, Oh yeah. Like I don't, I, I want to work out after work, but I get home and I'm on the couch. I go, don't go home. Well, I have go. And you said, it, go set yourself, uh, go bring your stuff with you, go do that. And you'll, act, you'll end up doing the thing, you know, you have to do, even when you might not want to do it because you've already set yourself up previously for success. And it's not like it's every day that the, those late nights are happening, right? It's like two or three times a week, you know? So see if you could coordinate with your partner, if you have one to watch the kids, if you have kids or whatever it is, like you're coordinating with them to work with you to hit this thing that is helpful for your health so you can enjoy more longevity with your family and quality of life with your family. Personally, my exercise is a form of stress relief. If I am not getting it, you will not get the best me. It also helps my symptoms a lot more. <laughs> so it's one of those things to where it's just like, 
this is the reason why I'm doing it. I am a better Peter when I have it than when I don't. So that's that's what I got to do. Now, when I, I did not start taking ADHD medications until six weeks ago, and I'm taking Oh, wow. the non-stimulant one. And so I was experimenting with different things to keep my energy levels before I realized that stuff, uh, that I had ADHD uh, or got the official diagnosis because I knew I had it two years ago, but that was like a mental health diagnosis. But Right, the right. official cognitive screening and things like that, that was the official diagnosis to where you can get medication now. Um, and so I, I take the non-stimulant and... I have noticed my energy levels are panned out more. So it's not a crutch. It's a thing to help you and you work with it. Now, the other things I was using, because I didn't realize I had this, that helped kind of, oh, I'm just like, oh, I have more energy when I do this. Well, you want to know what helps with the sustained energy levels and the ADHD a lot of the time? L-theanine and caffeine. What's that found in? Tea. <laughs> right? Right, So- yeah. So like green tea was my go-to. Now you'll also notice a lot of people with ADHD will self medicate with caffeine or Coke or, well, not the snorting Coke, the regular like drinking I Coke. mean, I don't, I can't speak Potentially to that, but real maybe. Coke too. Yeah. You <laughs> what know, a hell. <laughs> potentially, you know, so, um, because you're chasing the dopamine, right? So the caffeine is helpful for that because it helps them focus. But if you add L-theanine, they synergistically go together. And so I would use matcha and I'm just like, man, my brain works so much better with this. Let me start integrating this in here. And so you start to experiment with the things that work for your energy levels and go with it. And then you start to explore and you're just like, oh, well, I might have this thing. Let me see and experiment with things that help. Let's make sure the cost benefit analysis is in the beneficial favor on the needle of dial, right? Because I was against medication for a while. Like, I'm just like, I do not want to put stimulants in my body, but you don't have to do stimulants. There's non-stimulants, as long as you don't have bipolar disorder, because the specific one I'm talking about, forgot the actual name, but it's called Stratera, the brand name. Um, it works by boosting the epinephrine, and it helps slow down the degrade of it. So your neurotransmitters in a... neurotypical brain is what we say because neurodivergent is ADHD or autism or something like that. But let's just say in this instance, neurodivergence, ADHD, um, will be able to recycle their neurotransmitters to reuse them. So it's able to be utilized, sustained for a little bit longer with ADHD. We were talking about that battery that gets used up really quick, right? So like an iPhone that has uh, gone past its years of usage because <laughs> you want to buy a new, they want you to buy a new one. Right. Well, that's how it is with the ADHD brain. It drains a lot quicker. So this essentially allows the battery life to last a little It lasts longer. longer, yeah. And so the stimulants will not only add more dopamine to it, but will also slow the degradation of the other neurotransmitters too. So you overall can sustain the levels and not just lose interest in the middle of a task or doing the thing you're doing. So getting help where help is needed is helpful too. Is there a larger percentage of people with ADHD who are more prone to being like almost like an addictive personality as well? Or is that totally not? Because I'm, I'm curious on like, If, for example, you mentioned green tea or even caffeine, it's because, you know, because they feel good, they're like, okay, I have to have this. And then they kind of addicted might not be the right word, but again, I'm trying to get my point across of like, they just have to have it now. And it's like, okay, like, I'm, you know, they have it every day. If they don't have it, they feel terrible. Is that more prone in the ADHD community? Yeah. So, um, it's a reward based brain mm -hmm. because of the lack of the neurotransmitters, specifically dopamine and epinephrine. And you'll have a little bit of serotonin going on there. There's a lot of stuff going on in the brain. We don't need to get into the nitty gritty, but, um, <laughs> caffeine helps boost those levels up. You're getting a hit. Right. You're getting it there. A lot of AD, you'll notice that one of the comorbidities of ADHD in some of the population with it is they are going to be more likely to be addicted to things in general, whether it's playing video games for six hours, or if it is binge eating at night when you get home on the sweets, 
And so like what I rec like with people that I work with, I'm just like, you know, you're going to snack. We'll make a snack swap. <laughs> you know, it's just So like, play with it, play with it essentially. It's like, how do we, how do we make this work it. for us? Cause you're going Yeah. to, it's going to happen. So, It's going okay. to happen. So like, yes, caffeine, you'll see usage is up more. Personally, when I'm drinking coffee, I get the shakes. So I don't like using that. I'll use tea because the way the the plant chemicals, the phytonutrients are in there, they help you absorb the caffeine differently. And then in, in pair with L-theanine, it just helps it last a little longer and better. Um, and there's some studies on there and I can share them with you if you want to share it with the viewers. Um to where those, uh, the L-theanine and caffeine combo is very helpful for the ADHD or on like a little trick there. Also, omega-3 fatty acids help the neurotransmitters do their job. Oh, interesting. So omega-3s, getting more of those, whether it's through whole foods like chia seeds, flax seeds, fatty fish like salmon, or having an overall supplementation to make sure you have it. And vitamin D is also helpful for in magnesium for the ADHD brain because they go into helping build the building blocks of the neurotransmitters too as well as other hormonal things with vitamin D um and the magnesium is like every single thing in the body that requires energy ATP needs to be binded to magnesium in order for it to work hmm. so you're flexing your muscle the actin and myosin are going together you need ATP for that Right. Well, you also need magnesium. So <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. That's, that's a fair point. Yeah. Right. So um that's that's kind of the thing. But there were some studies, even with medication, that the symptoms were much better longer when they supplemented with vitamin D and magnesium. You don't need to supplement with those, but making sure you are cognizant of getting more of that in of your, getting it. Yeah. your intake is helpful. Uh, because now your neurotransmitters are firing the right way with omega threes. They're just firing better. And then you have your, if you're deficient in anything anyway, you're not going to function the greatest. <laughs> so making sure you're, you're, you're getting what you need is helpful in general. I'm not saying go and supplement and supplement and supplement. No, get your blood work done. Ask your medical care provider. Right, figure out what's wrong. Yeah. Figure out what's wrong. And then you can kind of see what the upper and lower limits are for you and your body when it comes to some of these stuff. But it's like, okay, learn more about your body and see how you can work with it in order to go with it and circling back to the snacking, noticing, okay, these are the textures, tastes, things I like, right? Take soda. You know how you get those tingles of the bubbles on your tongue? I love that. Yeah. Who, I mean, who, I mean, come on, who doesn't love, who doesn't right. love that? So it's not the sweetness that I'm craving from that. It, and that might be something somebody's craving from it, but it is the tingling that I like. I like the play of it on my tongue. Uh, and I can't make out for an hour straight. So I don't want to do that to get the tingling on my tongue. You know what I mean? So <laughs> I'd rather get it the, the slight bouts from, from the, um, carbonated water, maybe, right. That's a swap. Like instead, now, if you want a sweeter one, there's sweeter ones without sugar. They have the sweet sweetener enhancers. You got to take the swap that works better than what the other thing was. Right. So here it's just like, Oh, okay. Well, this is better than the other thing. Let's go with that, right? Power. And so it's just yeah. like, I look, yeah, right? <laughs> so crunch, if you really like the crunch of something, well, you know, you can just microwave popcorn that doesn't have any butter. You get the kernels, you get the microwave bowl thingy. Now you don't have any other things except for the fibrous popcorn that's in there. And then you can add seasonings to adjust it to your liking. So you get the crunch, you get the hand to mouth thing of you, doing something to get stimulation you get the crunch of the stimulation and now you have the flavor you want whether you put garlic and onion powder and salt in there or you put some cinnamon and stevia or splenda in there you know what i mean so it's just like you you kind of work with what your brain works i use grapes as a snack because i like the sweetness so i snack on grapes at night you know <laughs> so it's just like okay you know you're gonna do it let's Let's make it better. Make it, yeah. If you know you're going to do it, just like find a way to make it better. And I think that's just a, the great overarching point is just like, yeah, if you're going to do it, let's just make it better. Not saying you can't do it, just how do we do it in a way that helps us align better towards what we're trying to achieve? And, you know, it's better to snack on grapes than it is to snack on Oreos. Obviously, the texture is different, whatever, but that's the general concept. And yeah. uh, it's not about not snacking or it's not about not doing X, Y, or Z. It's about, okay, how do we make X, Y, or Z? 
reasonable that it, it is congruent with what you are trying to do and it doesn't sabotage you in the long run. I love that. I think right. it's a great idea, great advice. And you know how I went about in a circle during there to where I mentioned a bunch of other stuff during? Those were the bingo balls of ADHD popping in there. So <laughs> <That's> <laughs> to where taking a little extra steps, but it, overall, we got to where we, we got, we got there. No, we oh, so, it was perfect. We got there. But that's like the ADHD brain right there. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, it's like over here. But also when you go over here and then, yeah, I mean, like, it, it makes sense. But it, I mean, uh, I think it works out. <laughs> I think it worked out pretty well. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's kind of like, OK, let's work with our brain rather than against it, because you know you're going to do things. And even if you don't have ADHD and you notice a tendency to go towards something a little bit more, you don't have to say, I'm just going to cut that out and cold turkey it. That doesn't work in the long run for anybody most of the time. Uh, so it's just like, oh, well, I've got a good hankering and craving for this thing. Well, let's find the actual sensation or taste or texture of that thing because that might be it. Maybe it's just doing something with your hand that you're craving and you just need that stimulation. And you can just get a nice dopamine fix by uh, marching in place and getting your heart rate up, you know, because <laughs> that does stuff too. 100%. And I think, you know, I don't think it's just the ADHD community that, you know, does that. I think, I think it's some degree everyone has this. It's just obviously what what level that everyone has. Cause I have, I mean, I have the same thing too. It's like, oh my gosh, like I need, you know, I need, I need to have something sweet. I just have to have something before I go to bed or whatever it is. I get the, I get those inclinations too. I imagine most people get those inclinations. So it's about yeah. going with the flow and figuring out, okay, what can I do to make this work versus trying to just like, not like hate yourself, but just like, just like pound your head against the wall and trying to figure, oh, I got to stop this cold turkey. It's like, no, like we, we can figure this out. Like we can go with the flow. There's no reason to be a salmon in the river. You don't need to try and go against the current. Just go with it. Just make sure you're going in the right direction. I think that's a really good yeah. point to make. And and that's one of the things too. It It's go about it smarter rather than harder, right? right? And it's just like, okay, let's empty the blockage that's blocking us from getting to the next point. It it just doesn't make sense from a perspective of I want to do this long term to make it harder for long term mm -hmm. because how long is it going to be if it's really hard? Our brain biases the easier route. So yeah. you have to make the route that's easier for you or just slightly harder, but not to the extent to where it sucks. <laughs> So going off of that and seeing results of getting people to, to do this long term, to change their lifestyle, to get the results, let's use your psychology background for a second. You have a bachelor's in psych psychology. What would you say in your experience is the number one or whatever top reasons that people fail to achieve their goals in this instance? So in this instance, it would be they let one thing that they did wrong air quotation marks for you just listening to this i did quotation marks on screen uh is that something wrong happened and they couldn't make it right you can make it right right it's not about right or wrong it's not black and white it's gray and i think that's the problem that ends up happening is what stops people is it has to be perfect mm. the perfect mentality of my results are ruined now that I ate a whole tub of chips or ice cream. It's not. It really isn't. The body is very smart. It tries to be in a thing called homeostasis, which is a state of balance. So the amount of calories that you're burning on the treadmill is not actually equivalent to the amount of calories you're burning total because the body is automatically going to adjust, right? So the same thing that's going to happen with your goals, you can easily make it go back on track. If you take into a mind, hey, you know, this isn't the end of the world. Let's just shift gears a little bit. Give myself, let's give yourself a reboot period of let's have a 48 day just let's not worry about it. Let's be mindful of what we're eating and doing, but let's not be super strict and go giving yourself there. grace giving yourself grace essentially Give yourself like, some grace. Allow, yeah. allow it plan for it allow it to happen it's going to be there i mean it's like the person who's on a diet and they're like doing so great went to the wedding had the piece of cake and now oh my gosh well my whole weekend's ruined i might as well just have the pizza the cookies they see everything and then they ruin right. it for a week get discouraged quit and then I, and then they talk to us six months later it's like i want to start over again it's like because you let yeah. one piece of cake derail your entire you know the entire goal so i think that's very you know a similar concept
or if, you know, I have a lot of clients They're you know, if you have money to pay for training, most likely you have money for vacations, right? So <laughs> I have clients that, well, I work at a, a community center and usually they're older too. I'll have younger clients, older clients, they're all over the area, but I have my older clients that are in their anywhere between forties to nineties. Let's be, care be, let's be careful on. on saying older at 40s or 50s. Maybe older is like 70 plus. So let's I'm thinking <laughs> 70 plus when I say older, but okay. I'm also trying to like <laughs> include the other range. Um, so keep that in mind. I'm not calling you old if you're 40. Um, <laughs> but those who are a little bit better off in life, I should say, um, they'll end up going out for a month on vacation. Hell yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's just like, holy shit. So when you're going out and you want to enjoy something, well, you just create some guidelines so you're not going overboard to where it's just like, I know I'm not going to be 100% on track on what I've been working on so far, but I can keep myself from going super off the wagon to where I'm just like, oh, okay, well, let's just, I might rewind some of my progress a little bit, but at least it's not going from, oh, I have to rebuild from scratch all over again to where it's just like, oh, it's going to take me a few weeks to get back on the on the wagon. Big whoop. You know what I mean? Like, it took you maybe a year to get to where you were, and then four weeks? Yeah, that's nothing at that point. You were able to enjoy your vacation now. You know what yeah. I mean? You don't want fitness to overrule your life. You want to work with it because it's a part of your life. So you're going to have parts in which it's just, even if it's a one week vacation and it's not just a few days, you know what I mean? Like it's, yes, give yourself the grace and the permission to do things, but also be like, hey, you know what? I don't have to eat the whole bag of chips every single day or get a dessert on the menu for every single meal I'm having at the restaurant over there. You can. I feel attacked. But, well, you feel like <laughs> shit sometimes because not only mentally are you like, man, I was doing so good and now I did this, or your body's not used to it and you're just like, man, that sucks. Like, so it's just like, oh, let me, let me just create some guidelines to make this an easier transition for when I get back, but also to enjoy the time I'm having when I'm out. Awesome. Love it. I think it's perfectly said. I don't think I have anything to add to that. I think that's a perfect idea to kind of go through. The last kind of question I have, well, I want to give people an opportunity to uh, find you as I know we're running out of time. So where can people find you? If they want to learn more about this, or maybe they know someone with ADHD or they have it themselves. Like, oh my gosh, I never knew there was a coach specifically for ADHD to help me with my fitness nutrition. Where can people find you? So you can email me specifically admin at vital you, V I T A L U dot org, or you can find my website. I haven't fixed it yet. So the backslash has to be there in order for it to work. Uh, but it's a, uh, it's www.vitalu.org backslash home. Yeah. So I'm, we're going to have the link in there. So, so we're good. And then all my socials are on that website. I post more regularly on YouTube. Uh, and then I have some TikTok and Instagram things to where it's shorter blips to where Instagram, it's Peter, the vitality guy. Yeah, I love it. All that will be in the show notes. So all of you can click on that. Go visit Peter. Uh, I think it's, it's amazing advice. I, whether you have ADHD or not, I think the advice is very sound. It's very good. And it's very worthwhile to kind of take a stab at it. Because maybe even if you don't have ADHD necessarily or diagnosed it, some of these tips could work for you. Like they, you could have a certain personality that like this clicks with, and it could be worth listening to or looking at, and maybe even potentially hiring Peter as the coach, because, Hey, if something's not working, try something else. And that's kind of the mentality behind it. The, the last question I want to ask before we wrap things up here is what one thing, what can someone do today to give them a better shot at pushing past the, the barriers that we all have? What is something, what is one piece of advice you would give someone? So I would say start now. Because if you're just like, oh, I'm just going to start next Monday because that's, that's the start of the week, kind of. Well, you know, that's a Monday. That's a few days from now. And you might lose that motivation you have at the moment. So what I would say is ride the waves, baby. Just get it going now and set yourself a somewhat roadmap to get you there to where it's just like, what's one thing I can do today? All you need is one thing. It doesn't have to be a big thing. It can be as simple as taking the stairs instead of the elevator. It can be as simple as just focusing on your breath. Start with one thing and go from there to build the momentum. 
could be as simple as listening to an Instagram or a YouTube video or something like that from someone you're listening to. Exactly. So, or this wonderful podcast series, you know, what you're anything. doing already. So great job for those who, who are listening. <laughs> this is what you did. This you got started today. This was already it. So, um, Peter, I appreciate the time. Thank you so much. And uh, look, I, everyone needs to visit all those links that are in the show notes. But no, I appreciate the time. And uh, thanks for being on the show today. I appreciate you for having me.